Good morning. What a tremendous joy and honor it is for me to be here today sharing with you. I bring you greetings from your friends and brothers and sisters down in San Diego at the Christian Fellowship Congregational Church United Church of Christ. Indeed, it is a joy to be here. I have had the joy and pleasure, my wife and I, of knowing the senior minister here for the last decade. He has become not only a mentor and friend and father in ministry to me, but has been one who has graciously pushed and challenged me to be my best self. And you know this already, but I would be remiss if I did not say how tremendously blessed you are to have Dr. Scott Colglazer as your senior minister. I want to share thoughts this morning from this title, Radical Hospitality and Sacrifice. I remember the day like it was yesterday. It was my first semester as the new ministerial intern at the old church in Hell's Kitchen at 40th and 9th in the mean streets of New York City. It was where the famous social justice preacher, Walter Rauschenbusch, had pastored and served for several decades. In the months before I had arrived, I had discerned this call to urban ministry and had made all kinds of special arrangements with my faculty down at Wake Forest to complete courses in New York seminaries while pursuing this unique call to ministry. It was a brutally cold winter and I had arrived in January by train and one of my first assignments at the church was to serve as a weekly support person in the church's clothing ministry. It was a ministry in which I grew to love as I helped individuals and families find warm clothes to make it through the harsh New York winters. I've been encouraged by the staff to be discerning and to serve and to bless and give, but to be discerning because New Yorkers are fast. And if I were not careful as a young Southerner, I would be swindled out of everything I owned. In the weeks that followed my arrival and my work in the clothing ministry, I befriended a homeless man. He came to the church and received a jacket and began to share his story with me. I listened intently to every word, gave him my undivided attention every time we saw one another. And then suddenly, he hit me with the big ask. Brother Lee, he began, I'm in a real bind right now. I need $60 to get a bus ticket so that I can get out of here and get home. He had told me about his family and his life and a few of his impassioned dreams, and I felt like I knew him. In all honesty, I felt as if I knew him. I trusted him. So I bundled myself up, walked a few blocks to the local deli and went to the ATM and came back with three 20s, cold, hard cash. I handed the money over to him and he thanked me and I wished him well on his journey about three days later. As I was walking through the Port Authority, I thought that I spotted him in the distance. At first, I tried to convince myself that it was not him, but I knew the jacket because I had helped him pick it out. Our eyes locked. I saw him and he saw me. I didn't know what to say in that moment, and so 
I did the best thing that I could. I looked down and I kept on walking. But I've never stopped thinking about him, about the gift that I gave, about my moments when I encountered his life and the way that it made me feel. And the truth of the matter, church, is this, that once your life touches against the life of someone else in this kind of way through radical hospitality and sacrifice, you are forever changed, rewarded, Jesus says, for the good and to the glory of God. In the New Testament text that Catherine read for us just a few moments ago, we hear Jesus instructing the disciples in the work of ministry and missions. He challenges them to live lives of vulnerability, but commissions them and commissions them to take very little for the journey that is ahead. He invites them to travel without an overflowing suitcase filled with comfortable spare clothes or warm wraps for chilly nights or extra cash that will make the pilgrimage a little bit easier, plush. No, Jesus says, go, take little, and be dependent upon the kindness of strangers, the generosity of others that you meet along the way. Being dependent upon the radical hospitality and welcome of others, Jesus is not only fashioning a group of radical itinerant messengers of love, but Jesus is in fact making the gospel that they preach and teach vulnerable because it's utterly dependent upon the kindness of strangers. If it is to be successful, Jesus does not secure a future that is certain for this message of love and hope, but sends its messengers, the disciples, into the unknown world with the certain hope that wherever it is that they go, that someone will extend a hand of compassion that someone will prepare for them a warm meal, that someone will open their homes to them, that someone will radically open their lives, that someone will give as they have been given, and they will receive the promised reward, this certain gift for the radical hospitality and sacrifice that has been given not only to the disciples, but Jesus says to the one who sent them on mission in the first place. The disciples are to live lives that are completely dependent. They are reliant upon God. They are reliant upon the hospitality of strangers. What a way to live. This is the kind of dependency that makes folks like me terribly uncomfortable. I can't imagine or, or fathom the idea of traveling down the street or down the hall or to the next cubicle, much less great distances in this kind of radical way. It's hard to imagine life without all of the creature comforts and securities that the world says that we need, smartphones loaded with directions to point us in the way. Starbucks, Apple, Starbucks balances that need to be refreshed at the window and Apple Pay that is ready to make purchases and of course, Pokemon. Can't go far without Pokemon to pass the time so that it is not wasted. We long for these kinds of creature comforts of security and ease, but this is not the calling that Jesus makes to his disciples, nor is it the calling that is made to us. They are to go to places that they have once feared, and so are we. They are to encounter people 
that they may have never known before. And so are we. They are to teach and live out the good news of God's unending love. And so are we. They are to allow their wandering, unrestricted, untenable lives to be changed for the good. And so are we. They are to be transformed by the gospel in the same way that the gospel is to transform everyone that they meet. And so are we. The offering of hospitality is more than just a gift that we give, but it is a gift that we receive back again, for it offers unto us a kind of spiritual vitamin called perspective. When we show hospitality, we are charged with the task of stepping into the shoes of someone else and stepping back from our normative everyday lives to see life from the other, sometimes the other that is in our home, sometimes the other that is in our church or in our employ, sometimes the other that we are simply sharing the sidewalk of life with. We are called in these moments to be a part of this sacred act of hospitality, to welcome, to accept, to embrace, to receive and give sacrificially. That new relationship is then born out of this sacredness. And it is to become in many ways rooted in a sense of mutuality at the margins of life this wonderful little book called Marginality. Young, young Lee describes the context of Jesus's ministry with the disciples he authorized and commissioned. He writes these words, Jesus's public ministry may best be characterized as a life of marginality. He was a homeless man with a group of homeless people around him the people Jesus called to be his disciples were marginalized people. None came from the religious establishment. They were not elders, high priests, or Judaic law teachers. Most were fishermen, except for a tax collector and a clerk, Judas, who betrayed Jesus. His associations were primarily with the poor the weak, the outcast, the foreigner, and prostitutes. This marginalized community is the community that Jesus continues to seek out even today. It is the community who, in responding to the good news with radical welcome and sacrifice, are promised this special gift, Jesus says, reward. We live in a world in which so often we do, in fact, reward, honor, and sacrifice the heroes and sheroes of our lives. And we look to celebrate all of those major sacrifices and accomplishments, daring defeats, daring feats for God and for others. And while it is good to remember them, it is also good and wise to celebrate the ordinary acts of hospitality all around us. The friend and neighbor who drives an extra two miles in the opposite direction to pick someone up for church on Sunday. The companion who listens to the veteran tell his war story for the 50th time, but listens as if it were the first time. Radical hospitality creates experiences. What begins as a very simple gesture of love and welcome becomes a, a door that is open to a broader conversation which then leads to relationship, bonds that are not easily broken, 
radical hospitality creates an encounter in which lives are transformed for the good and to the glory of God. The Reverend Dr. Dan DeLeon, pastor of Friends Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in College Station, writes about this kind of radical nature of encounters that have been born out of this biblically grounded idea of hospitality. He says that hospitality is crucial to the gospel message because unless we change our perspective, change our minds about strangers that our society lets down, that we cannot be about the mission of sharing the good news of forgiveness, of healing, of justice, mercy, and righteousness. Perhaps this gift, this reward that Jesus promises is not some financial breakthrough or a promotion on the job or recognition as the 2016 hostess with the mostess. Perhaps the reward that Jesus promises is less about being lifted up and more about looking out. What if this promised reward is the gift of perspective, the ability to see someone else's point of view, the ability to stand for just a moment in the shoes of someone else, to understand, to seek to understand life as the graying gay widow, as the single mother struggling to make ends meet, as the formerly incarcerated, as the transgender youth, as the new college grad, as the couple that miscarried last week, as the young black activist, as the woman trapped in sex trafficking, as the immigrant seeking economic relief. What if the promised reward, the thing for which Jesus speaks, is really not some prosperity, never-ending happiness, eternal bliss, but what if that promised gift is the perspective to anticipate and make provision for someone else's most basic need for freedom? liberation and hope, what if the reward is one's ability to know that someone traveling in the dry Palestinian heat might be in need of not only sacred hospitality, but a cold, cold cup of water for their overheated and exhausted bodies. In a world where refrigeration was not heard of, Jesus suggests that those who would offer hospitality would greet the sojourner with a cold cup of water, underscoring the radical nature of hospitality and sacrifice that is to be extended beyond meeting just the basic need in a land where one experiences dry heat. Jesus invites listeners to pour water, not water that has been sitting around all day, but to journey to the well, to lower the bucket, deep down into the well, and to draw cold, cold water, and then to return quickly so that the sojourner might know cold water in her body. We are not invited by Christ to do what is easy, to pick up what's convenient, to do what is comfortable and without challenge. No, we are not invited to cushy, leisurely lives of faith, but we are invited to leave the comforts of our home, 
and to journey to the well to draw cold, cold water for souls that have been parched in the journey. Can you imagine just for a moment the kind of joy that would fill that would-be traveler when their bodies receive not only the basic need, the water, but when they cognitively realize the extravagance of the gift in which they have received, cold water. We are invited to be church. Every time that we open the doors, whether it's the doors of this church or the doors of our hearts or the doors of our home, we are invited to show hospitality and sacrifice. Whether in moving and sweeping worship in a Gothic nave or in a storefront beside a sandwich shop, we are invited to show radical hospitality and sacrifice whether in a rowdy crowd gathering, speaking against racial injustice, or in private business meetings, dreaming about the future, we are invited to show radical hospitality and sacrifice, whether we are engaged in an action to bring justice to the poor, marching with the LGBT community, or caring for, as the Episcopal priest Kelly Brown Douglas puts it, bluesed bodies, we are invited to a life of radical hospitality and sacrifice. May we live into the radical nature of God's calling through Christ and be the good news that we preach. Amen.